Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about what type of function is it. One of those really common questions you get in algebra, uh, usually in school it's algebra 1 or algebra 2 maybe. Um, they want to know, based on the information that they're showing you, what type of function is it. Specifically we're going to talk about stuff like linear, so a line. y equals something with x, maybe mx plus b is a, a reasonable way to look at it. And then we're looking at something with y has an x squared in it or a quadratic. Or we're going to look at an exponential, so the general form is y equals something times something else raised to x power. So you're plugging in the x as an exponent as opposed to it being part of the, uh, the base of the equation. So let's take a look. Um, the first thing that they might give you, or they often give you, are they just give you a set of points and they want you to go ahead and graph them and you'll get a look at uh, the overall outcome from there. So from the first section, and try to get my pen to work today. So if I have this type of thing, I put it in, I'll notice that, well, that's weird. Um, I sort of have this negative 3 and 4, and then negative 2 and 2, and negative 1 and 0, and maybe 0 and 2. What I'm noticing, or negative 2, sorry, what I'm noticing is that I'm going down I'm going uh, uh, down up by 1 every time in the x, but I'm going down by the same amount every time. So what this is is a linear equation. Plus, if I drew a line, it would go right through the points. I can basically tell that they're linear. Uh, another look that they might show me is something where my dots start to have this sort of feel to it that, well, that's interesting. There's some matches on one side or the other. I get kind of this U shape. That's my parabola, so this is a quadratic. That should have an R on it. So anytime you get your dots and it starts to make that parabola, be it right side up, or I mean they could end up looking upside down, you're dealing with the idea of a quadratic just based on the points. And the last one would be an exponential. An exponential tends to start off a little bit, your points sort of look close to each other, and then all of a sudden they start to skyrocket that type of thing. Anytime you have that sort of setup, it's probably going to be exponential. And what you're looking at there is very little change in my x's or my y values in the beginning and then all of a sudden they go up significantly. So if you have something like um, you're going up a little bit and it's at 3 and then 2 is at 4 and then 3 is at 5 and then all of a sudden at 6 it's like up at 8 and at 7 it's at 14 it's probably exponential in relationship those numbers are a terrible uh, setup but I'm just saying that's what it'll sort of look like on the other side you'll tend to see uh, in the quadratics you'll see them having the same y values a lot that's you know once it gets past where the midpoint of the quadratic is or the uh, line of symmetry here you'll start to see it popping up twice so the next type uh, they'll give you are just the basic graphs. They won't give you points. They'll say, okay, here's some graphs. What do you think? And it's the, ba it's the same you know, general logic as before. For linear, you're looking for anything that sort of has that straight line to it. And it could be going down as well, positive or negative. Uh, quadratics, you might have this kind of feel to them. Or here, this is if it's negative x squared pretend that's like balanced and and the exponential like I said tends to look a bit like this and it could also be sort of you know going down so this sort of thing that's what you're so this is exponential this is quadratic and the u's been nice to be there because it looks like a u so and then linear has the word line in it. So you should be able to get those going. The last type is probably the most uh, often seen type or the one that causes people the most struggle and that's w what happens when you're given a table. So I'm given sets of data x and y values and this one goes from negative 2 to negative 1 to 0, 1, 2 and it goes up 3, 6, 9, 12, and 18. What you're looking for is to see how much what's changing. So on this side, my x values, they're just going up by 1 every time. And on the other side, you'll notice, well, heck, they're going up by 3 every time. To get a real look at the total overall change, I need to look at the change in y, that little triangle means change, 
and then the change in x. And if it's always the same like it is here, I ha it has a change of 3. I might say that this has a common difference. Anytime you have a common difference, it's going up or down by the same amount every single time, you know, or you can know, that this is a linear equation. So anytime you have like the whole, hey, it's the going up the same amount each time, it means you have a linear equation. I'm actually going to rewrite the word linear, even though it'll take up time, and I hate taking up extra time. I know I get obsessed with making it look like humans should be able to read it. So common difference is uh, linear. Uh, the next type that you might see would be 1 x y like this. Now what you need to think about is um, maybe trying to see if it's linear. That's a good way to start out. So I'll look to see if there's any sort of common differences involved. That's generally my MO. Um, so I'm going to say that this one's going up by uh, 3 every time. So plus 3, that's good. Over here it's going up by 6. Here it's going up by 12. Here it's going up by 24. So it's not linear. There's no common difference. Uh, from there, I might try to see, well, what happen is there something that I, I can multiply? So I'll get rid of all that and say, well, you know, adding didn't work, but maybe times will work. So I'll go over here and do 3 times 2 gives me 6. 6 times 2 gives me 12. 12 times 2 gives me 24, and 24 times 2 gives me 48. Now over here, once again, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So my real change in this case is not a common difference, it's a common ratio. And my common ratio in this case is 2. I just take whatever the last term is, multiply it by 2, and it gives me the next one. Anytime I have a common ratio, you'll notice that the numbers jump up a whole bunch. It goes up a little bit, up to 6, and then a little bit more to 12. But then all of a sudden, it's going up. Like, the next one's going to go up uh, 48 times 2, so uh, 96. It's going to go up a lot. That thing shoots up very quickly. Anytime you have a common ratio, you're going to say, okay, well, this thing has, has to be exponential. So sometimes you try stuff and find out there's a common difference and you say, well, it's a line. Sometimes you try stuff out and there's no line to it, there's no common difference, and you try a common ratio and that works and you say, okay, it's exponential. And once again, I've managed to completely butcher the term for it, so that might help if I wrote it a little bit nicer. Part of it is my little pen's being weird today. There we go. Exponential. There are other cases, and I'm uh, the quadratic one. What about that? Well, let's get to it. I'm going to do this one x, y, So I'm going to look for common differences here. Well, this one goes up 0 0.5. The other side just goes up by plus 1 every time. If it doesn't, you will have to do some sort of analysis uh, like this down here, but you don't have to in this case. Uh, this one goes up 1.5. This one goes up uh, 4.5 plus uh, or minus 2. So I'm, what I'm really doing is a subtraction to get me to the point. So it goes up 2.5, and then I do it again, and it gives me... three point five. So the issue here is it's not linear, obviously. I mean it doesn't work out in any way that makes sense. If you go through a new common ratio, zero times nothing will get you zero point five. It doesn't happen. Zero times anything is zero. So it's not going to have a common ratio. But what if I continued looking for common differences but I just use these numbers? There's an idea. So I do zero point five uh, to one point five that would be plus one. And then I do 
1.5 to 2.5, that's plus 1. And then I do it again and I get plus 1. There it is. What this, uh, we usually refer, uh, we may refer to this as a second difference uh, or something else. Basically, if you have, and I'm going to call it the second difference. Anytime you have that sort of setup, you're going to end up with a quadratic. Which makes a heck of a lot of sense. If you have a common difference, that would be first level. It's linear. A linear equation is y equals x. If you have a second difference, like you do here, you, do, you find no common difference in the first time you try it, but then you do it again, you get a second difference. Well, it's a second dimensional difference, so y equals x squared, so it's quadratic. Incidentally enough, if you go out and do it again, because it didn't work the second time, and it works a third time, you're looking at x to the third power in most cases, so a third difference would lead to that. But that's the setup. If you have a common difference, it's linear. If you have a second difference, it's quadratic. Probably if you have a third difference, it's uh, cubic, so x to the third. And then if you have a common ratio, so you multiply, you end up with an exponential relationship between those data points. So that's it. What type of function is it based on graphs, points, and tables? Hopefully you find this helpful.